Hey everybody, Jill here. Welcome back to the channel. Have you ever wondered how robots can be so graceful, so aware of their surroundings? I mean, some of these bots can move with more precision than I can. Today, we're diving into the secret world of robots. And no, I'm not talking about some hidden society of sentient machines yet. We're talking about capacitive sensors, the unsung heroes of the robot world. Capacitive sensors are like little electric feelers that allow robots to sense their environment without actually touching anything. Think of it like this. Imagine trying to find your way through a dark room. You might reach out with your hands to feel your way around, right? That's kind of what capacitive sensors do for robots. They use electricity to detect nearby objects, measure pressure, and even track multiple points of contact, all without any physical contact. Pretty cool, right? Over the next few minutes, I'm going to break down the different types of capacitive sensors, show you how they work, and highlight the amazing things they can do. We're talking robot assistants, self-driving cars, and maybe even a sneak peek into the future of human-robot interaction. So buckle up, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's get our hands dirty with the fascinating world of capacitive sensors. All right, let's start with the basics. Imagine a robot arm that needs to stop before it slams into something. Not a good look, right? That's where proximity capacitive sensors come in. These sensors act like a robot's personal space bubble, detecting objects before they make contact. Now, you might be wondering how do these sensors actually sense something without touching it? Well, it all comes down to electric fields. You see, everything around us has an electric field, even if it's not plugged into an outlet. A proximity capacitive sensor emits a weak electric field, kind of like an invisible force field around the sensor. When an object enters this field, it disrupts the field and the sensor detects that change. Think of it like this. Imagine you have a perfectly smooth pond and you drop a pebble into it. The pebble creates ripples that spread out across the surface, right? That's kind of what happens with the electric field. The object entering the field is like the pebble and the ripples are the changes in the field that the sensor picks up. The sensor then uses this information to figure out how far away the object is. The closer the object, the stronger the disruption to the field. This allows robots to judge distances, avoid obstacles and navigate their surroundings without walking nose first into a wall. Proximity sensors are used in a ton of cool applications. You'll find them in everything from touchless faucets and automatic doors to those annoying parking sensors that beep at you when you're parallel parking. In robotics, they're crucial for collision avoidance systems, especially in industrial settings where robots work alongside humans. For example, imagine a robot arm on an assembly line. It needs to grab a part, but there's a chance a human worker might be in the way. A proximity sensor can detect the worker's presence and signal the robot arm to stop, preventing a potentially dangerous situation. It's like having a safety bubble around the robot, making sure everyone can work together without, you know, getting a robotic arm to the face. So to sum it up, proximity capacitive sensors are all about giving robots a heads up about nearby objects, keeping them from bumping into things and making sure they play nice with their human co-workers. It's all about safety, efficiency, and making sure robots don't accidentally turn into bulldozers in a china shop. All right, we've covered robots sensing objects from a distance, but what about actually feeling them? That's where touch capacitive sensors come in. These sensors are all about detecting physical contact, allowing robots to interact with the world in a more nuanced way. Think about how you use your sense of touch. You use it to pick up objects, feel textures, and even communicate through handshakes or hugs. Touch is a crucial part of how we experience the world, and touch capacitive sensors are bringing that same capability to robots. Now, how do these sensors actually work? Well, they're a bit like those touch screens on your phone or tablet. Remember how you can tap and swipe on your phone's screen and it responds to your touch? That's because your phone's screen uses capacitive sensing. It works like this. The sensor has a conductive layer, kind of like a tiny electric grid hidden beneath its surface. When you touch the screen, your finger disrupts the electric field of that grid, just like an object does with a proximity sensor. But here's the cool part. 
The sensor can pinpoint exactly where the disruption occurred, telling the phone where you touched it. In robotics, touch capacitive sensors work in a similar way. They can be embedded in a robot's gripper, its fingertips, or even its entire skin, allowing it to sense touch and pressure in specific areas. This is huge for tasks that require a delicate touch, like handling fragile objects or interacting with humans. Imagine a robot designed to assist with surgery. It needs to be able to handle delicate instruments with precision and care. Touch capacitive sensors in the robot's grippers would allow it to feel the instruments, adjusting its grip strength to avoid damaging them. Or, let's say we have a robot designed to work in a home environment, like a helper bot that can fetch you a drink or fold your laundry. Wouldn't that be nice? Touch sensors would be essential for this kind of robot. It could use them to sense when it's made contact with an object, preventing it from crushing your favourite coffee mug or ripping your clothes. Touch capacitive sensors are also paving the way for more natural and intuitive human-robot interaction. Imagine a robot that can shake your hand, give you a high five, or even offer a comforting pat on the back. These are all things that touch capacitive sensors can enable, blurring the lines between humans and machines. OK, so we've talked about robots sensing the presence of objects and even feeling touch. But what about understanding how much force they're applying? That's where force, pressure, capacitive sensors come into play. These sensors take things a step further, allowing robots to not only detect contact, but also measure the intensity of that contact. Think about how you use your sense of touch to gauge pressure. You can tell the difference between a gentle tap on the shoulder and a firm handshake, right? Force slash pressure capacitive sensors give robots that same ability to sense and respond to varying levels of force. Now, how do they do it? Well, these sensors typically consist of two conductive plates separated by a thin layer of dielectric material. This dielectric material is the key. When pressure is applied to the sensor, it squishes the dielectric material, changing the distance between the two conductive plates. This change in distance affects the sensor's capacitance, which is a measure of its ability to store an electrical charge. The greater the pressure, the more the dielectric material is compressed, and the greater the change in capacitance. The sensor measures this change in capacitance and converts it into a measurement of force or pressure. Force pressure sensors are like the sensitive fingertips of the robot world. They allow robots to do things that require a delicate touch, like handling fragile objects, assembling intricate parts, or even giving a massage. Robot masseuse, anyone? Imagine a robot designed to pick strawberries. Strawberries are delicate, and squeezing too hard will turn them into jam. A force pressure sensor in the robot's gripper would allow it to sense the perfect amount of pressure to pick the strawberry without crushing it. That's the difference between a delicious strawberry and a fruity mess. These sensors are also crucial for robots that interact directly with humans. For example, imagine a robot designed to assist with physical therapy. It needs to be able to provide the right amount of resistance and support, adjusting its force based on the patient's needs. Force pressure sensors would allow the robot to do this safely and effectively, helping patients regain their strength and mobility. OK, we've covered robot sensing proximity, feeling touch, and even measuring pressure. Now let's talk about robots that can handle multiple touches at once. That's right, we're entering the world of multi-touch capacitive sensors. Think about how you use your smartphone or tablet. You can pinch to zoom, swipe through photos, and even play games that require multiple fingers on the screen at the same time. That's multi-touch technology in action, and it's revolutionizing the way we interact with our devices. Now, imagine bringing that same multi-touch capability to robotics. It opens up a whole new world of possibilities for human-robot interaction, object manipulation, and even robot learning. Multi-touch capacitive sensors work by detecting changes in capacitance at multiple points simultaneously. Remember how a basic touch sensor detects touch at a single point? Well, a multi-touch sensor is like having an array of these single-touch sensors arranged in a grid pattern. When you touch a multi-touch surface, your fingers create multiple disruptions in the sensor's electric field. 
The sensor's electronics can then analyze these disruptions to determine the location and size of each touch point. This allows the device to track multiple fingers, pinches and other gestures, making for a more intuitive and versatile interface. In robotics, multi-touch capacitive sensors have the potential to revolutionize the way we interact with robots. Imagine being able to control a robot's movement simply by touching it, like guiding its arm to a specific location or showing it how to perform a task. These sensors could also enable robots to learn from human demonstrations. For example, you could teach a robot to fold a shirt by guiding its hands through the motions. The robot could then record and analyze these multi-touch inputs, eventually learning to fold the shirt on its own. Multi-touch sensors are also finding their way into robot hands and grippers. Imagine a robot hand that can manipulate objects with the same dexterity as a human hand, picking up and manipulating multiple objects at once. This would be a game changer for tasks that require fine motor skills like assembling small parts or handling delicate materials. So, there you have it. A crash course on capacitive sensors in robotics. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the basics of proximity sensing to the mind-blowing capabilities of multi-touch technology. It's incredible to think that these tiny sensors are playing such a big role in shaping the future of robotics. Capacitive sensors are giving robots the ability to sense and interact with their environment in ways that were once thought to be the exclusive domain of living beings. They're enabling robots to work alongside humans with greater safety and precision, to handle delicate objects with care, and to learn from human demonstrations with remarkable speed. As technology continues to advance, we can expect to see even more innovative applications for capacitive sensors in robotics. From robots that can perform surgery, to robots that can assist with everyday tasks, these sensors are helping to blur the line between humans and machines, creating a future where robots are no longer just tools, but partners, collaborators, and maybe even friends. Thanks for joining me on this electrifying journey into the world of capacitive sensors. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments what other robotics topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible with technology.